concentration written all over his face. Two paces, and there it comes, and it's there. Wide kick from Filipina. On to Olsen, Filipina. He puts it, he's out of one, Olsen two. He's got runners with Mark Graham. Mark Graham will unload it to Olsen, Filipina, and he's there. Mark Murray now getting into Gary Jack. What a hefty tackle from that man again, Olsen, Filipina. It's Cannon. He sets it up, Filipina. And he's got it down. Big Olsen with those chocolate pillars of his known as legs. What a player. What a player he was. Our new book is available. Uh, the Big O, The Life and Times of Olsen Filipana. Pacific Revolution pioneer. Ain't that the truth? And Fletch? Fletch's FaceTime? Yes, we got, do it. we got Olsen on there. Olsen, can you hear us? Yeah, you got the Fletch out loud and clear. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah Olsen, how are you? How's the health? Not too bad. Not too bad. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. I, I just want to ask you... Um, Olsen, as the book suggests, mate, you're a trailblazer for so many young Pacific Island players who've played and are playing now. To go from South Auckland as a young bloke to the early 80s in Sydney, how big a culture shock was that? Uh, huge culture shock. You know, because um, especially from where I was from, which was South Auckland, you brought up that is, it was like, a bit like Redford, but a lot, a lot rougher. And you more or less had to... Uh, you know, it was survival of the first. And to go over to Australia, and you've got night clubs that are open for 24 hours, which is unheard of in New Zealand and everything else. It, it was just something that took me a while to get used to. And, um, you know, still don't do what I get used to now. Oh, so when you put the, the Kiwi jumper on, it, it was like you grew another leg. Is, was that because you are back with, with your teammates? Or what was it about putting on that New Zealand jumper? Because your, your performance, especially against Australia, it was just outstanding. Yeah, you hit it right on the nose. That, uh, you know, playing with the teammates and, you know, you go back with the Canterbury Bulldogs about, you know, being a family and that was exactly how the world was like in that 85 series. And, uh, you know, a lot of, in the book itself, it explains basically why I um, come up against the Australian sides that I played so well because of all the, uh, you know, the racial abuse I talked during the time I was playing in the Winter Cup back then. And what I did is I got a lot of players back uh, through hard tackles and everything else that abused me and, you know, hit the old, uh, hit the old, you know, poke in the eye, kick and everything else. And uh, I think two years in a row, I got voted the hardest hitter, the hardest player to tackle. And that had a lot to do with it. Because I made a promise to my mother that I wouldn't, uh, you know, have a fight or course fights uh, while I was over uh, in, in Sydney playing the Winfield Cup. And um, a lot of the players I got back and I established myself as a, as a player not to be mucked around with. And the players I, you know, I didn't get over the 12 months during the season, I took it out of the strike. <laughs> this matches. Yeah. Oh, so, mate, we just saw a bit of vision of you running over a few blokes. Who did you find, who did you find to be your toughest opponent while you were playing? Uh, Mick Cronin and Steve Rogers. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, players, they've got to put them in the class of like um, Roger Federer's tennis players. They love playing the game and, and played, the, they played the game how it should have been played. They're good and hard. Yeah. Olsen, mate, you're, if you, I think, if we had to encapsulate your career in one game, mate, we always talk about that game against Wally Lewis. Wally was the best player in the world. And you just gave him a bath. Mate, what was, what was behind that game? Uh, going into that match, did you feel like something special was going to happen? No, I didn't because I was, I was like, you know, like, as they say, I was plucked from reserve grade. And I was, you know, I, I actually had to take the phone off the hook because reporters were ringing me, ringing me up and saying, what are you going to do with Wally being, you know, king and world's best 5'8". Yeah, and I, I didn't know actually how to psych myself up for it. So... You know, he's been a great fan of mine since the state of Orange because I never knew you know, I understand why New South Wales kept on calling him Wally the Wanker. Yeah. And then what you play those games, you know, to understand why you guys hate him so much. Yeah. You know, he the state of Orange, it was just unbelievable. So, you know, there's one bloke I, I set out to meet and we played the first test at Land Park then. And I, you know, took, uh, we went to the after-match function that under the grandstand and I just, 
seen him, I just, uh, you know, I had a up and I went straight for him because I just wanted to meet him because he was such a great player because of what he did in the state of origin. And I went at, uh, up to him and I introduced myself and put my hand out and he hit it away. And I go, what the F is going on here? And, you know, that, that was basically the motivation, well, all I needed to um, outplay him. Olsen, mate, it's been great catching up, mate, and congratulations on the book, and congratulations on just you know, blazing the path for some of the young Pacific Island players, mate. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks very much, gentlemen. Stay good, safe. Good on you, Thanks, Olsen. Mate. And if you want to get the book, here it is, uh, uh, the big O, uh, dot Kiwi. And uh, I'm about halfway through. It's fantastic. Really good read. So appreciate that, Olsen Filipano. What a pleasure.